Hi everyone, in this lecture video we're going to go over bacteria and gram staining. So first let's talk about the objectives for this lecture. You should be able to identify the diversity of prokaryotic cell types among bacteria. You should investigate, um, you will learn to investigate where bacteria live and you will learn to identify physical properties of bacteria. So this will include colony morphology, cell shape, um, the arrangement of bacteria, and their cell wall structure. First, let's talk about the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Cells in general can be divided into two broad categories, prokaryotic or eukaryotic. Prokaryotes are believed to be the most primitive types of cells. It is believed that they were around much longer than eukaryotic cells. So they're going to be much simpler. They're going to be smaller. You'll find that when you're trying to find them under the microscope, eukaryotic cells are going to be much easier to find. Prokaryotes are a little bit more difficult to find and they require higher magnification. They lack membrane bound organelles and this includes the nucleus, but also other organelles, such as the mitochondria, the rough ER, the smooth ER, the Golgi, all those organelles that you would see in a typical um, eukaryotic cell are missing in prokaryotes. Now, just because there isn't a nucleus, it does not necessarily mean that there isn't a DNA. All cells have genetic information, and bacteria do have DNA. They have a circular... Um, chromosomal DNA. And bacteria are going to also have ribosomes, just like eukaryotic cells. However, they have a different type of ribosome called the 70S ribosome. And this is why um, antibiotics will target bacteria in your body, but not your own cells. And that is because antibiotics are targeting the 70S ribosome that is present in bacteria but not in eukaryotic cells. And you can see a diagram here. And as you could see, um, there are no um, organelles present in this bacterium. Eukaryotes, on the other hand, are going to be much larger and more complex. They require more energy. They do contain membrane bound organelles. So they have a nucleus and you will see other organelles such as the mitochondria, the Golgi, and all the other organelles. Um, and they do have ribosomes, but they have another type of ribosome called the ADS ribosome. So whenever you are um, having to identify prokaryotes versus eukaryotes, keep in mind that bacteria and um, archaea are the two types of species, um, the two types of organisms that are considered prokaryotes and everything else is going to be eukaryotic. And here are two other illustrations of prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. So here you have um, a prokaryote and here's a eukaryote. And as you can see, a eukaryote is going to be more complex. Um, there's just a lot more going on here in the cell. So let's keep in mind that the bacterial species, um, the number of bacterial species is going to be very large. There are many, many, many um, species of bacteria out there that we cannot always study in lab because in, a, in order to be for us to identify and study bacteria, you have to find them, isolate them, but give them the right environment and the nutrients um, so that they can survive and reproduce. And that is not always possible. So um, just because they're not being isolated and studied, it doesn't mean that they don't exist. So not all bacteria um, are able to be grown in the lab. And let's also keep in mind that not all bacteria are pathogenic. Um, many of them, some of them cause disease, but many of them are harmless, and some of them are actually beneficial for your body, such as um, your gut flora. 
bacteria are going to be considered single-celled organisms. They are prokaryotic, so they lack a nuclei and other organelles. They do have a cell wall, but keep in mind this is not that this is not the same cell wall that you would find in a plant cell. In bacteria, the cell wall is going to be made out of peptidoglycan, and it's either going to be very thick or very thin, and we're going to talk about that. And they're going to be much smaller than eukaryotic cells. And bacteria come in three different types of shapes that we will talk about in just a second. And when you look at bacteria under the microscope, you'll notice that they have um, distinct arrangements. So they're kind of, you're going to see that some bacteria that are going to be in pairs, some are going to be in groups, and some are just going to be spread out. And um, that's actually something to pay attention to when you're trying to identify a specific species, uh, a specific species of bacteria. Let's talk about the colony morphology. So if you are a biology major, at some point in your undergraduate career, you will be given a sample of bacteria and you will be asked to identify what it is. So it, it's called an unknown. You'll be given an unknown. And in some cases, you might be given more than, an, more than one unknown. You might be given two different unknowns and you'll have to identify them. One of the first things you're going to do is to isolate the bacteria and grow them on a petri dish. And when you grow them, you, you will see these colonies, as you can see over here, forming on your petri dish. And you always want to make sure that you take good notes of the colonies, because that tells you something about the bacteria that you're dealing with. It is one of the things that is going to help you find the correct identification for your unknown. So you want to pay attention to the color. They're usually white. Most colonies are usually white, but that's not always the case. Sometimes they're green, a little bit green. Sometimes they're pink. So write that down. Take note of that. And you should also uh, pay attention to if it is cloudy, if it's clear, if it's transparent. Pay attention to the moisture level. Some colonies are going to be very dry and some are going to appear very moist and some are going to have this in-between consistency. And the size is something you should pay attention to. Some of these colonies are very large and some of them are going to be very small. And pay attention to the border of the colony. Some are going to have a very smooth border like this one over here. And some are going to have this fuzzy border as you can see over here or this one over here. So pay attention to the texture of that colony. Uh, take, take notes, take pictures. And you should record the number of colonies that you see on your petri dish. Bacteria are going to come in three different shapes. It is quite easy to identify them on this slide, but when you're looking at an actual slide of bacteria, it could be a little bit more complicated. Um, these rod-shaped bacteria are called bacillus or bacilli. Um, these that are going to be spherical are going to be called coccus or cocci. And the spiral-shaped bacteria are going to be called spiralis or uh, spirilla. So remember these and practice looking at them under the microscope because sometimes, for example, when bacillus is dividing, it kind of looks like caucus. So you want to practice looking at them. It takes, you have to get your eyes used to identifying these different types of shapes. And this will be very important to keep note of when you're trying to identify a particular type of bacteria. You always want to find the shape of the bacteria. And when you look at bacteria under the microscope, you want to pay attention to how they're arranging themselves. It depends on the bacteria. Some will come in pairs like this one. Some will form lines. Some will form these clusters. 
and some are going to just be spread out. They're, they don't really attach to other bacteria. So pay attention to these um, characteristics of bacteria because it is one of the, the um, things that is going to help you identify the bacteria correctly. And for your exam, you should know what these mean. So coccus, diplococci, um, streptococci, you should kind of study these um, and know what they mean. Next, we're going to talk about the cell wall types in bacteria. You're either going to have them be gram positive, and gram positive bacteria will stain purple after gram staining, or they're going to stain pink, which means that they're going to be gram negative, as you could see here. What you'll notice with the gram positive bacteria is that they have a thick peptidoglycan layer. And this pe thick peptidoglycan layer really absorbs the, the color of the crystal violet that you add in the process of gram staining. And this is going to be the first reagent that you add um, in this process. And with gram negative bacteria, it doesn't really hold that color of purple. When you look at the cell wall types, here's a gram positive right here, and here's a gram negative. And as you can see, they both have peptidoglycan, but in gram positive, it is going to be much thicker, and in gram negative, it is going to be much thinner. And the interesting thing is, um, sometimes students will think that gram positive bacteria are more dangerous or more pathogenic, but that's not necessarily true. Gram negative are actually harder to get rid of. So they're considered to be a little bit more dangerous than gram positive. And the reason for that actually is because if you pay attention here, you'll notice that gram negative has a plasma membrane on the inside and also has one on the outside. And this makes it a little bit more difficult for antibiotics to target. So let's look at this picture on the left here. This is going to be gram positive and this is going to be gram negative. Let's talk about the metabolism of bacteria. So bacteria can be autotrophs, which means that they will use um, substances that are available in their environment to produce their own food. And they can be photosynthetic, which means that they can use light energy, kind of like plants, to produce their own food, or they can use chemicals in their environment to produce their own food. And other bacteria are going to be heterotrophs, which means that they need to consume organic compounds to survive and reproduce. And usually this is things like sugars and carbohydrates, and things like that. And most likely the bacteria that you're going to be working with are going to be hetero heterotrophs. These are the exercises that you will do in lab. You will um, learn to grow bacteria from your environment, which is kind of cool. You will look at some prepared slides to be able to identify different types of bacteria, get practice with the microscope, and you will learn how to prepare slides and you will also learn gram staining for environmental sampling you're going to take a petri dish like this over here and it is going to have agar gel in it with some nutrients to grow bacteria you're going to take a sharpie and you want to make sure that you put your name on it and you're going to divide this Draw lines on it and divide this petri dish into sections. And you're going to think about um, different places that you want to take bacteria from and grow. So this can be your tabletop, it could be the bathroom, it can be the floor, or it can be your skin. Um, you choose. 
several different locations that you want to pick up bacteria from. What you're going to do is you're going to open your cotton swab and you're going to dip it in saline solution. And then you're going to rub that cotton on the surface of the area that you want to investigate. So your tabletop, you know, your skin, the bathroom, the floor, wherever. And then you're going to take that swab and um, rub it on the gel that's inside this page, this petri dish. Now, what you don't want to do is um, rub too harshly because you don't want to pierce into the gel. As long as you're rubbing it on on the surface of the gel, the bacteria will get there. You're not even if you don't see anything, they're there. And then you're going to leave this petri, this petri dish in a, an incubator that is 37 degrees. And you will see colonies appear in 24 to 48 hours. And it will look something like this over here. And keep in mind, these are not isolated bacteria. So you're probably looking at many different types of bacteria um, that you've picked up from the environment. If you're trying to grow one specific type of bacteria, you have to isolate the bacteria, and that is a whole different process. For the second exercise, you're going to practice looking at prepared slides. You don't really have to do anything. You just have to really learn to use the microscope properly as long as you know how to do that you should easily be able to look at these slides. And this is important, again, because you want to practice identifying bacteria. OK, you're going to learn how to uh, prep slides. So when you do this, you're going to take a clean microscope slide, as you can see here. Um, you probably want to label it and you want to take a china marker and draw a circle on it. On this um, PowerPoint slide, it says that it is optional. I highly recommend it. It will make it so much easier if you draw the circle. And then what you're going to do is put a few drops of water in the center of the circle over here. And you're going to leave the slide aside. And what you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to take a wire loop as you could see in this picture here, and you're going to hold it over the flame to sterilize it. So you're going to light up a Bunsen burner and you're going to hold this wire loop on the edge of the flame and you're going to hold it until it turns red. And once it is turned red, you remove it, wait for a few seconds, I would say maybe um, 30 seconds or so. And while you're waiting for it to cool off, you shouldn't place it anywhere. So this wire loop shouldn't touch anything while it is cooling off. You're going to take the wire loop and you're going to pick up a small sample of one of your colonies. You don't want to pick up the whole colony, but as long as this wire loop touches the colony, it will pick up some bacteria. So gently pick up a small amount of bacteria from the colony and then you're, what you're going to do is rub it on this circle over here where we had the water. So the bacteria will be transferred from the wire loop onto your slide and they will kind of be in this, um, they, they will be mixed with the water over here. And you're going to set the slide aside and you're going to allow it to air dry. And, you know, this depends, I would say maybe five to 10 minutes usually. Next, you're going to heat fix the bacteria on your slide. This is where you want to make sure you're not burning off your bacteria. It really doesn't take much to heat fix the bacteria. What you're going to do is light up the Bunsen burner and you're going to pass the slide over the fire on the Bunsen burner, over the flame. And you should not hold it more than one second. So once it, one Mississippi, and that's it. Um, if you want to pass it the second time, that's fine, but don't do it more than twice. Uh, 
Okay, now we're going to talk about gram staining. And for your exam, you should have all of these steps memorized. Now you're going to take that heat fixed, uh, that, that slide with the heat fixed bacteria. And what you're going to do is take crystal violet. So this is the first reagent that you're going to use. You're going to pour a few drops over your um, bacteria and wait for one minute. And then you're going to indirectly wash it with water. And what you're going to find is that usually in labs, there's bottles of water that you could use specifically for this. You pour it on top and you wash off the crystal violet. Next, you're going to take Graham's iodine and you're going to pour it over your slide and wait for another minute. And then you're going to wash it off with water again. And next, you're going to put a few drops of alcohol on top of your slide and wait for about 10 seconds. And then what you're going to do is add a, another reagent called safranin on your slide and then wait for another minute and then wash it off with water. And you're just going to dab it off with paper towel and look at it under the microscope. And what you'll notice is that if it is gram positive, it will appear purple. If it is gram negative, it is going to appear pink. So this is a mix of gram positive and gram negative bacteria, but you can see them <laughs> isolated here. Here's the gram negative and here's a gram positive. Um, bacteria are actually best seen under the 100x objective. And that's the one where you have to use oil. You don't use that in general biology. You do that in microbiology. For general biology, you will be using the 10x and the 40x to look at the bacteria. And again, also pay attention to the cell wall. So if it's gram positive, gram negative, but also the shape and also the arrangement of the bacteria when you look at them under the microscope.